hip, hip, hooray for DNA. It provides the key to the plans for making everything in you and me. Welcome back. In the last video we distinguished between homozygous and heterozygous alleles and what the difference between the two was. We'll do in this video, we'll go over the next dot point, which says explain the relationship between dominant and recessive alleles and phenotypes using examples. So there's a couple of words that are in the syllabus dot point which we should go over again. It says allele here. So allele works again a version of a gene. So for example, if we have our gene which determines the color of the peas, then our alleles would be green and yellow. So what color they actually make up, whereas the gene is quite general. So it's just saying, okay, this gene codes for color, whereas the alleles say, okay, it actually codes for this specific color, green or yellow. So the, we said that there was a allele in here. Um, phenotype, that was the appearance. So for example, if you have big G and small g, big G stands for green, small g stands for yellow, but because big capital G is always dominant, so the actual phenotype in this case will be green because its appearance is dominated by the green one. I said dominance. Dominance is the, the determining allele. So the dominating allele determines the appearance. So whenever there's a dominant allele in any combination, whatever that dominant allele is will actually be the appearance. In this case, there is big G and small g, but because this one is dominant, the actual appearance of it, the phenotype, will be green. Now the recessive, recessive allele is only determines the phenotype if no dominant allele is present. So for example, if we have two small g's, that's the only example where the actual phenotypes, so the appearance, will be yellow. Any of the other combinations makes it green. Now obviously, even though the actual syllabus dot point doesn't say phenotype, genotypes are a genotype. We should also know what genotype is. And genotype is just the alleles, so the versions of a gene that make up genes. And we said with the actual plant color, there were three different types, main types, double G, big G, small g and big g, and small g, two small g's. And this phenotype was obviously green, same as this, green, and this is the only one which was yellow. The reason why that one's yellow is because it was two recessive ones, and where there's no dominant green one to overshadow them. But when it comes to men's experiments, he actually tested not just the green, we went over you know, the C color, so the yellow and the green, but he tested all kinds of different versions. And what we'll do in terms of the examples we'll give, just to make it a bit more interesting, is just cover a different experiment he did. And he compared spherical to wrinkled peas as well. So this is what we'll do, the examples we'll give. So what were they? So we're here, they're getting the same idea. We have spherical and wrinkled. Spherical just means round. So these are the round versions. So we can imagine round versions. So everything else is the same, color is the same, everything else, but just one is round and the other is wrinkled. So this had just a couple of, you know, it was a bit more wrinkly. The letters, because this is the dominant version, and the dominant we always make the capital letters. So we're going to say big S is our dominant one, because that's our rounds, so rounds dominant, whereas recessive was wrinkled, so a small s is recessive. And what we're going to do is we're going to have a couple of different versions to show you examples, to show you what happens when we have different combinations. So here this parent generation has one, which is a homozygous dominant, this one has two alleles that are both dominant. This one is a homozygous recessive. It has two alleles which are both recessive. And when they combine, you have you know, you get one S from here, one S from there. You get one S from here again for this version, and the second S from the other one. Here you get the second S from that plant, and the second first S from this plant, then we get the second S from this plant, and the second S from this plant. So what would the phenotype be? Well, the phenotype would be for all of these, they would all be round, because big S stands for round and is dominant over the small ones. So even though each of them has these smaller ones, and not the small ones, but the wrinkly ones, say, small N stands for wrinkly, even though all of them have it in their genotype as an allele, this one's overshadowed, so this one's hidden, so you can't see it. So this one's hidden, you can't see it. So the relationship between this kind of crossing 
is that the dominant will, will dominate over the recessive. So the phenotype is whatever the dominant allele is. Now, if we were to take the actual F1 generation, so the, these ones that we made here, and we crossed them with each other, what would happen is we would have this S from the first one and this S from the second one. So this here and this here. This equates this one here and this equates this one here. We cross them together. The first S comes from the first plant, the second S comes from the second S plant, the first S comes from the first plant, and the second S comes from the second plant. The first S, now we're going to take the second, the small S from the first plant, cross it with the big S from the first plant, then we're going to take the small S from the first plant, and cross it with the small S from the second plant. And now what we have is we have one which is a homozygous dominant. This is the homozygous that has all the same ones, that's what homozygous means, and it's dominant. So the actual color, the phenotype, will be round. Same with these, these are the heterozygous, and they will also be round because we have a dominant version of the round overpowering the wrinkled one. Whereas we also have one wrinkly one. So this one here, the only reason why it's wrinkly is because we have no dominance which overpowers it. So we just have two alleles which are both round in nature. Uh, both are wrinkly in nature. So we have one wrinkly. But what, what we'll do if we, we now, if we haven't done this before, what, what happens if we take, for example, we take this plant which we produced and cross it with this plant. So we cross some of the F2, F2 generations. These are the F2 generations. We, we cross them to make FG, F3 generations. So what would happen if we take these specific ones? This is what I'll show you now. So let's say we have uh, this one as one of our plants we took. The capital S comes from here, small s comes from here. The other one was the recessive one. The small s comes from here, and the small s comes from there. So now we would have this s going over, and that small s coming from the second plant. And then the same with this one. If we take small s from first plant, cross it with the small s from the second plant, you get this. Now if we take the small s from the second plant, a uh, first plant, sorry, from this plant here, and then take the first s from this plant, we get this, going off all the different possibilities. And then we take the small s from this plant. I just made a, a tiny mistake. So it's supposed to be so capital S from here. It's meant to be this one here, and then small s and small s, so would it be like so? But now what we have is we have two which are phenotypes being round, and two which are wrinkled. But when it comes to this actual point, it says explain the relationship between dominant and recessive alleles and phenotype using examples. Right, so anything that has a dominant allele in it, will take the color of the dominant allele. So, for example, yeah, if we have either a small s and a big s, or two big s's, then in each case, you're going to have the color will be round, because big s is dominant. The only example of this, these crosses that makes a recessive phenotype is if both of them are small, there's no dominant one to overshadow it, that phenotype would be wrinkled. So that's where you should know for that dot point. Hope that was useful. Thank you for watching.